Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Wacom webinar with Stacey Roshan. This webinar is about active and connected remote learning for math and science teachers. I am your host, Melissa Ashcraft, and I work at Wacom. Um, Wacom is the leader in digital pen technology, which might not sound like all that interesting. Um, but when you try to do a math equation or draw something or even annotate a document with a mouse, um, that might feel kind of bad and having a digital pen would make a lot of sense. So we make those digital pens that make math equations, drawing, product design easier. Um, you can find Wacom products everywhere from Nike to Disney to Pixar um, to Stacey Roshan's classroom too. Um, we are co-hosting this webinar with Pear Deck. Uh, you will all get to get your hands on with Pear Deck. Um, we will share a code with you in the chat so that you can um, get into Pear Deck and start learning. Um, during Stacy's webinar, she will invite a couple of students to participate in a Pear Deck demonstration. And then after that, um, everybody attending can get into Pear Deck and work with Stacy on a few math problems. A couple of notes before we pass things over to Stacy. Um, this is a one hour session. The last 10 minutes will be for Q&A. Stacy will answer some questions at the end. We will also answer some questions in the Q&A um, on Wacom's side too. Um, please use the Q&A feature to submit your questions. Uh, we will not be answering questions within chat. Um, to get into Pear Deck, we will also add the code into the chat. You will go to joinpd.com and the code is O-L-E-H-W and we will also add this into the chat too. So you don't need to remember that right now. And the next slide is introducing Stacy Roshan. Um, Stacy is a fabulous instructor. She is one of the leading experts on flipped classroom and remote learning. Um, if you haven't met Stacy yet, you can follow her on Twitter um, at BuddyXO. She is one of the leading voices in um, remote learning and education. Her work has been featured in national media publications. She also writes a prolific blog and shares many tips on flipped classroom and remote learning on her YouTube channel. We will share all of this in chat so you can follow her um, right after this webinar. So after that, I'm gonna hand this over to Stacy. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I can already see many of you joining in on the Pear Deck. Um, if you are able to do that, that is wonderful. If that's not comfortable for you, then you don't have to worry too much about it. We are going to be showing everything through a screen share today. So if you're more comfortable just watching, that is fine. If you would like to actively participate with us, then please join into the Pear Deck. A suggestion might be that you use your screen. If you see me petting something, my dog is on my lap. I should let you know that. That's Buddy right here. <laughs> um, so if you open your screen side by side, then you can see the Pear Deck on one side and you will also be able to see me and my screen share on the other side. That is often how I start class with my students, but again, do whatever is most comfortable for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen at this point. So I can see right now that everybody's joining into the Pear Deck. I can see 60 people have already gotten on. Again, the information for that Pear Deck is in the chat. And what you're able to do right now is answer those first couple of questions that I have for you. So if you wanna go ahead and answer if you currently have a Wacom device, this is just a yes or a no. 
if you have one, let us know which one you have. And then if you know about Pear Deck, I uh, would like to see your comfort level already. And then it's gonna tell you to stop because we'll do the rest together. So I'm gonna let you guys work for about another minute. And those of you who have not joined yet, please just follow the instructions on the screen, joinpd.com and type in that code, O-L-E-H-W. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you've answered the questions, great. If you haven't, don't worry too much about it. So basically what we're gonna talk about, first of all, is just why the right technology can make all the difference. When you have the right technology tools in your hands and in your classroom and in the hands of your students, all of a sudden things become possible that weren't quite possible before. So that can be a game changer. And that's what I wanna share with you today. Not only the Wacom device, but then what I pair it with to make the magic happen. Um, and so that will be the second part. And then we'll really dig into moving the focus from the teacher. So I'll start with talking about the tools that I use on the teacher end then move into the focus of, well, now how do I engage my students with all of this? We'll take you through a mock classroom so you can kind of see how I interact with my students and um, we communicate with one another during the chat. So at this point, what I'm gonna be doing on my Pear Deck, and I will talk more about Pear Deck in a moment, but I've allowed you guys to move through those first couple of questions on your own because I wanted you to answer at your own pace. This might be something that you send home for students to do as homework, for example. But now I'm going to take control back and Pear Deck has both a student pace mode and an instructor pace mode. And right now I've moved us back to instructor pace mode. And so now, the slides are going to move as I move them for you. And so that's something very important to be aware of, especially now in our remote learning environment. Some of us get to see our students face-to-face -face through a Zoom or a Google Meet, and some of us do not have that opportunity. So there are both modes in Pear Deck, depending on the needs for you and your students. So just to show you what this looks like, first question I asked was, do you have a Wacom device? And with Pear Deck, I can show the answers. You can see it's almost half and half with people who have versus people who don't. And right now, this is all coming in anonymously. So you're not gonna see names attached to this. However, there is another view where I can go back and see who has answered um, which way. So then what different devices do we have? So we have an Intuos, Intuos, Intuos small. So I have this view where I can go person by person. I also have a view where I can kind of see um, everything all at once, which might be better right now to kind of see a lot of the Intuos tablets, bamboo, Intuos. So I will talk a little bit about that today, but I'm also gonna talk about the device that I'm currently using, which is the Wacom One, which has a display on it. How much do we know about Pear Deck? So a lot of people have not used it ever before. So I will dig into what Pear Deck is and how to get started with that and also share some resources with you um, that you can learn more about it later. So as you can see, this is all updating in real time. As people are doing it, I can see in real time um, what people are responding. Before I move you guys back to just focusing on my screen, I just wanna show one more thing because you might wanna call the attention of the class back and have people not navigating anymore and answering the question anymore. Just pull your attention back to our discussion now. There is the ability to lock the screen. So if you are in the Pear Deck right now, you'll see that you no longer have the opportunity to respond um, because that would be a moment where I say, all right guys, let's 
move it back to my Google Meet screen, let me move it back to my Zoom screen, whatever, so that students focus on whatever we now want to talk about and we can bring it to conversation. So I want to just start with a very quick little bit of background about how this all started for me. So in my classroom back in the 2009-2010 school year, I was teaching AP Calculus and I felt really pressed for time and I didn't have the opportunity to sit with students on an individual basis like I had dreamed of doing as an educator and I needed a better way. And so that was when I first learned about screencasting and I said, well, this is going to be my solution. And I decided to flip my classroom back in 2010 before flip classroom was really a thing. Um, and really my purpose for it was just to free up class time to be more about students needs rather than what I needed to deliver. So I offloaded um, the very lecture portion of my class to video for students for, to watch ahead of time and then they could come into class to work. But as Melissa started us off with, I desperately needed a pen to be able to write. And I actually started using a tablet PC. I am a Mac user though, so I wasn't very happy with that. And when I learned about the Wacom tablets, that's when I really found a sweet and happy spot for myself. I could still use my Mac and just plug in my Wacom tablet and use what I was already used to using and loving and create screencasts for my students. And now that it's a comfortable flow, I make so many videos just because it's natural and feels good to me. So I also, um, I wrote this book called Tech with Heart. And to me, that's what looking to tech is all about. It's a solution for our classrooms where I believe that technology can further bring compassion into the classroom by allowing us to get to know our students on a deeper, more personal level. And that's what I hope comes across in this webinar today about how can we hear the collective results of our class and make sure that everyone's voice is being heard. For some of our students, they are going to raise their hand just like in this image. And for some of our students, they need time to process and think before they're ready to respond. And some of them have so much to contribute, but they do better, better in a written format. And so to me, technology has been a solution in this area. So this is kind of what my classroom looks like. I'm very lucky to have a set of Wacom tablets for my students to use. Um, this is actually an older Intuos model, but I got this class set back in 2013 and they are still going strong. I'm still using the same set. So these do have lasting quality. Um, they are an investment that have been very worthwhile for me and my students, and we've used them over the years. My students plug it in to the laptop that they're already bringing to class. Um, now, I do wanna mention, because I've gotten a lot of questions in the past couple of weeks about Chromebooks. Um, these Intuos tablets do not work with the, Intu with the Chromebook devices because you need to install the driver. But if students are bringing in a PC, or a Mac into the classroom. We have a bring your own laptop model at our school. Um, it works, you can see both a PC and a Mac is being used in this example. And I'm having my students write in the Pear Deck so that I can see how they're responding. Just like we started off with today, I could show all responses on my screen, which is in the classroom on my projector. And right now it is through a screen share because my students are at home. So I um, had also taught an online, purely online version of AP Calculus. And this is the other view where you'll see some names. I've blotted them out here because I want to respect student privacy, but I also wanted to just show you that there is another view where I can see all names attached here. And I can see in real time how students are working through problems. Now this has been so amazingly valuable for me to understand process and how students are thinking about problems. So as math and science teachers, this is so valuable 
to us, not just seeing the end result, but seeing how students are working through problems. Now, I fully realize that not everybody's going to be able to get a Wacom device into the hands of their students right now. My students, this was my online class, but my students who were in my face-to-face -face class who are now at home, I had the class set, but I didn't have enough tablets to send home for every single student. So they don't have the devices at home, but because I have the device, we can still, I can be handwriting, I can write out what students are talking about, and I can still have them do some little sketching at home with their mouse. Um, it's not ideal, but it gets us to where I need to be. And those are the things I'm going to show you in more detail when we get into the mock classroom in just a couple of minutes. I want to start first with some of the basics though. And I said that I am going to be showing you a lot of the Wacom One and that's a device that I have right here, which is a display tablet. So I can see whatever is on my laptop screen here. And I can also use it as an extended display which I'll show you, that's my favorite way to use it. Or the Intuos tablet is the more affordable option and that is just the blank um, opaque slate and you write on that, you have to look up at your screen to know where you're writing. Now, personally, um, I started you know, with an Intuos tablet, but because I do so much writing, I make all my screencasts through this, I use this thing every day. I find it more natural and um, just easier. And when it's easier, I use it more often to have a display screen. So if you are able to get a Wacom One, that is my number one recommendation of a tablet. It is rather light. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, it's their newest product at uh, the lowest price point of a display tablet. And um, that is what I would recommend one of these two tablets. Um, with the Wacom One, you'll get, this is what's gonna come in the box. So you'll get obviously the tablet and then you'll get one cord and it has an HDMI uh, and a USB and then you plug the other USB into the wall. And so that's kind of what it looks like to get started. All you have to do is plug it in, download the driver. So there is a Mac driver and there is a PC driver. Um, you download the driver and that's it, and you get going. Um, there's not really anything else that you need to do to set this thing up. It's very quick to set up. But once you have it, now there's a couple of options. And I do wanna talk about one thing that not everybody realizes is that the display on this can actually be used as a second monitor. So I can use it and just mirror my screen, which is what most people do. Um, maybe if you're in the classroom and you put your projector up, you know that you can mirror your screen. Whatever is on your view is also on the projector view in the classroom. That same thing happens here. But what I can also do is actually uncheck the mirror display and use my Wacom device as a second display. So what that means is I might be able to see all my students' faces on my main laptop screen, but then I can write on my, um, my Wacom One. And so that gives me just that added display, which right now, as we're doing everything on our laptops, um, and you know, maybe you don't have a printer at home. I don't have a printer at home. This gives me a second screen. So it is so helpful, particularly right now. It is like having another monitor. Um, and so that is another reason that the display might be something that is interesting for you to use. I'm using a Mac, so this is how my display options come in. And I can just set it up either to mirror, same exact thing, or as a second display. So now what do I write with? Like, what do I do once I have this thing that writes on the screen? How do I write on things? My answer is different depending on if you have a Mac or if you have a PC. I'm going to start with a PC option. If you have a PC and OneNote, I think it is an incredible option, especially for math teachers. They have math tools that are built in. It is really, it's incredible. There are some math tools on the Mac. It's just um, not nearly as robust as the PC version. So there is a Mac version of OneNote, 
I don't like it as much as I like Notability. Notability is what I personally use on the Mac. Um, but on the PC, I would definitely recommend you look into OneNote. It, both of these options give you a very binder-like feel, um, which is great. You can have different subjects. You can have notes within that subject, and it's very easy to organize everything in that way. I'll show you very quickly what my notability looks like. I have um, kind of my work in my AP Calculus class. I have all my notes there. Then I have my student work, which I'm pulling in and I'm grading, and then I pull it into a graded folder to kind of archive it after I've graded it. And then I also do my own um, journaling and my own daily planning. So I have a different divider for that. And I just find this really easy to organize everything um, and have my different classes there. Both of these options would give you that. So now when we get into like, what apps do I use to actually teach with? So I use Pear Deck most of the time to deliver my lessons so that students can interact with me. So what is Pear Deck? And I'm gonna get into how we build a Pear Deck, but Pear Deck is basically an add-on for your Google Slides. So you create in your Google Slides, and then with Pear Deck, once you install it, you get the sidebar here so that you can make your lessons interactive. You can add text questions, you can add multiple choice questions, number questions, drawn type questions, which are my favorite, obviously, so that I can draw on my screen and students can draw on their screen. So it's just an add-on for Google Slides. It also works with PowerPoint if you are a PowerPoint user. I'm a Google Slides user, so that's what I'm gonna be showing today. The other thing that is really um, a must for me is Equasio. Equasio is a, let me go to another screen so that I can show you that. It is a Chrome extension and you can get this for free for educators. It's always free for educators, not just right now. Um, and once you install that extension, you can write a equation in any Google Doc, in any Google Slides, in any Google Form. So all I do is I click that little button and you can see at the bottom of my screen, it pulls up the Equatio editor right here. Just pull that up. And then there's actually this tool right here that's handwriting recognition. And let me just show you how that works. So when I click on that, then I can handwrite. So right now I'm going to write with my um, Wacom One and I can write any equation. I can write an integral and it picks up my handwriting. Just one moment, right there. And then I insert the math and it looks like it inserts as an image, it is. But one thing to note, you'll see that I had done this one ahead of time and it is an image. So you're clicking on it, you're like, this is an image. But when you have the Equatio toolbar, toolbar opened, you just press edit math. And what it does is it pulls up that equation. And so all those equations are editable at any time. So it's not just an image that you pull in, you go back and you wanna change your test from year to year. These are all editable at any time and I can, even though I drew my equation, I can change it with my keyboard and I can type um, as Stacey, well. Stacey, yes. we have a question about Equatio while you're doing it. So I normally wouldn't interrupt you, but um, Yvette Lee would like you to show again which icon to click to get to the Equatio. Sure, so I installed Equatio as a Chrome extension already. Um, so you would go to the Equatio website and um, I'll have to leave all of these links available for you guys. Make sure that you get them after the fact. So if you just type in actually Equatio into Google, you'll find it here as a Chrome extension in the web store. So you would install this onto your Chrome and then you will get this into your toolbar. But something that's very important is that you need to upgrade as a teacher to be able to use all the features that I'm showing. So if you go to the website, let me sign in with Google.
Well, maybe I shouldn't have gone there because that's going to bring me to something else. Let me go back to Google. If you go to their main site, I promise that I will make sure that I leave these links later. What you do is you sign up as a teacher and then you will get access to all of the premium features as a teacher. So you can see that you can add it to your Google Forms, you can add it to your slides, your sheets, and your drawings too. And you can even talk to it aloud. There's a screenshot reader. You would go down here to where it's free for teachers. You fill out this form and then you get it for free. So right now I'm going to just drop this in the chat so that you all can have that. Um, But I, I will make sure that this um, information is available afterwards also. Sound okay? Are there any other uh, questions that need to be answered right away? I don't know if I can. I think we're okay, Susie. We'll come to the others um, at the end. Okay, sounds great. I'm just gonna drop this into the chat for everybody right now. Okay. So, the equations, oh, one more thing that I really wanted to show, especially for, um, it does have some predictive formulas in here for both math and for science. So um, if I start typing something like the quadratic formula, it comes up with that already for me. So they are already in there, some formulas that you would popularly use. Um, I don't really use many of the chemistry ones, but if I start typing water, I can get, you know, the, all of the symbols there. Um, I'm sure there's much more in the science that I haven't explored yet, but it does have various options. If you go into the toolbar, you can see that I can turn on, I have everything turned on. I can turn on prediction there and I can choose to turn on prediction for math, chemistry, and all formulas that they have built in. So, I use that with also my Google Slides because Google Slides doesn't, like Google Docs, at least it has an equation editor built in. I find Equatio better to use and it looks nicer and it's larger, but there's no way to enter equations into Google Slides. And this is the way to enter equations into Google Slides. So this is one of my lessons that I have for my class. And I had done this months ago, but even if I click any of this now, if I click on the Equatio toolbar and open it up, I can click edit math and I can refine or change any of the formulas that I have there. So that's a quick little preview, but something I use a lot on the teacher end. All right. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just quickly show is a way to very quickly give students some instruction. Um, I'm using Flipgrid a lot right now. Students get stuck on a problem and I just want to help them solve one individual problem, not make a big math screencast, but just give them a very quick little answer, but not just type it because sometimes that's hard to follow. I want to just follow up with a very quick little video. I'm using Flipgrid. So if you go to Flipgrid, this is free. You sign in as an educator um, and make your account you go to flipgrid.com and you sign up. You can record using this little shorts camera. You can record a video. And when you first pull it up, it's going to show your face like you're making a video. Um, but there's also this whiteboarding tool or blackboard. You choose whiteboard or blackboard. I'll choose whiteboard for right now. And then I can use my pen with my tablet. And I will, um, I will say to you that this is not the smoothest writing on this. It's a little bit jaggedy. So I just want to tell you that. However, it is such a valuable uh, tool for us to be using right now as we want to deliver quick little um, responses back and forth with our students and make it feel a little bit more personal. So I just press the record button. It counts me down. And I can start explaining my math solution. So x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. There's a little bit of a delay right now, so that's why you see that delay. It's not because of Flipgrid. 
And then I can continue solving that problem like this. And obviously I would be explaining what I'm doing to my students and factoring it. I'm not gonna finish, I'm just gonna press next so that I can show you how easy this is. I can start explaining my math solution. So x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And then I would just press the next button. You have to snap a selfie at the end. So let me do that. <laughs> OK. And all I do is now I share this link with my student. It is um, only anybody with the link will be able to view that. And that's it. I can share that with my students. And it can be an individualized feedback. It can be a class feedback. But that is one of the easiest ways to send a quick little video response to your students how to help them solve a problem when they're stuck at home right now without having to get them onto a chat like a Google Meet synchronously. Okay. How is everybody doing right now? Are there any questions coming in that need to be answered? Nancy, if you want to pause for questions, there are a couple of Equatio questions. Um, one is related to, from, it's from Luis Diaz. Will Equatio work with Microsoft Teams? Um, I, I don't, I don't know uh, how, no, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how it would work with it. Okay. It's a Chrome extension. So that's all I know. If anybody from the Equatio team is in this uh, webinar, please add it to the chat because I don't know the answer. Um, two questions, but well, one more question on Equatio. Can you change the font? Uh, there's, uh, there, so the customization on that, it's not super uh, great and also I like, you know okay math teachers you you feel my pain here when you start typing it's like aligned on the bottom and not really aligned i can make it smaller i leave it on large because that gives me the best display but you can see it's not great so a little tip there is i'm just going to show you this is the only things that you have customization over so like the font size you can just change it between large um, regular and small, but you really want to keep it on the larger it is, the better um, resolution it will be. I, that's all you can change though, even if I change my font. It's only going to change my font, not the Equatio font. Um, I do just want to show one thing because if you ask that question, this might also get to you. You can start typing text in here. It is going to be their font, not your own font. So I could say my equation, or solve, right? I'm not typing. Solve this. I can type it in there. And then I can continue to write out whatever I want to do. Do my integral. That's not a real equation. And that would kind of align it a bit better, but no, you can't customize your font. Okay, and I'm gonna ask, um, there's two questions that are very much the same. Um, one is from Brian and one is from Yvette. The first is how long can short videos be on Flipgrid? And the second is how long are the videos on Flipgrid? And then after those questions, Stacey, we'll turn it back to you and you can continue on with your lesson. Yeah, great question, 10 minutes maximum. And um, students can also reply on Flipgrid, that's another option, but I just showed you the shorts camera, which is instructional, 10 minutes um, is the maximum. All right, so um, this is just kind of the ones that we've talked about. And then the last thing that I really wanted to just touch on, and then we're gonna get into Pear Deck for most of the rest of it to be a little bit more interactive, because this is what I've been talking about so far is very much what you need as a teacher to kind of provide some of the instruction. So one of my favorite ways to grade work, again, as you probably have noticed, I use Google for everything in my classroom. Um, and so my students are submitting their work through Google Drive. And I use a, another um, 
Chrome extension called Cami. And it is, there is a paid option, but I'm using the free option and I have everything that I need there because I really just need to be able to mark up and draw their work. So if I am in my Google Drive and if I right click on a PDF document, it works in any, um, I can even do this in a Google Doc. But if I now annotate with Cami, and again, you need to get this Chrome extension ahead of time. But once you do that, then you can mark up any PDF. So when my students turn in, this was a snapshot of a student's work. They just took a picture of their work. They uploaded as a PDF to Google Drive and they submit it that way. I just right click on that document in my Google Drive and then I have all the pen tools available there, just like this. And I can change my color of my pen. I can mark up their work, just like that with my pen and then I can share that back out with the students um, just with a share link here. Or I can also download that document if I, if I, you know, if students want to print it or whatever, I can return it to them. But I can just get a share link, share it back to Google Drive. There's a lot of different options there depending on how you hand back work with students. But this has been such an easy tool for me to be able to mark up student work. I can add in text boxes when necessary, but normally I just draw with the handwriting tool and it's been a really simple um, solution for me. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. And so that one again is like, you would go to camiapp.com and you would get started from there and you just log in with your Google account and um, it will add, you can add the extension to your Google so that you can do the same thing that I just showed. All right. So um, at this point, I'm going to show you how to get started with um, Pear Deck. And so again, this is another, I'm going to be showing it just through Google Slides. You can also get it for PowerPoint. I'm going to be showing the Google Slides option. You, for the first time, you would go to the add-ons in your Google Slides, and you would go ahead and get the add-on. So you would choose Pear Deck at this point, and you would install it. So from there, you would then open it on the sidebar right here. You would open Pear Deck. Once I open Pear Deck, it just opens on the side like this. So that now gives you the ability to add interactivity to any question that you added. So I just build my Google Slides. It's my first step, build my Google Slides or take Google Slides that I've already created that weren't interactive and now I can make them interactive. And then if I wanna be able to draw on the slide, I just click this button and then it's going to add this interactivity to the slide. All it does is it adds this little bottom bar to my slide right here. And once that bottom bar is added, that is my indication that now this is a drawing type slide. You're not going to be able to do anything until you actually start your lesson. So you would press this button here to start your lesson. So I add all the different question types. And you know, at the beginning, so you can see this was a multiple choice type question and that is indicated by this bottom bar. I had chosen this choices button and then I can choose what I want as my A, option, my B option. If I wanted another C option, I can choose that there. I'm going to focus on the drawing because that's where the magic happens for me. I then would start the lesson. When you start the lesson, you can choose a student-paced activity or an instructor-paced activity. Now something to know is you can go back and forth like I did with you guys today. I started as instructor or student-paced and then I moved it to instructor-paced. And then it's going to launch into another tab. So this is the other tab that it launches in. And at this point, my slides are kind of static. I can't make any changes at this point. And I have students log in as you all logged in at the beginning of the session. I recommend just making all my slide types drawing so that students can draw on it. And I'm gonna show you how you as a teacher can draw on the slides also. And then I use Equasio to write out any equations in advance so that they're all preloaded and typed and look nice. Um, now, something to 
note, which we talked about at the beginning, was that you can lock the screens to focus the attention back on me as a teacher. And I'm going to show you that in a moment as we get into the mock classroom portion um, as a way to control things um, and help your students focus on the right thing at the right time, which is very important. And then when you end your Pear Deck session, if you are doing this through Google, then you can actually do something called publishing student takeaways. And that will give each individual student a Google Doc copy of all the slides that they have responded to with the answers that they have responded so that they have all of this information at their fingertips for them after. So it's not just what they see during their session, but they can look back at it after. And then also as a teacher, you have another view that you can always go back in and view all student responses. So right now, I'm gonna just show you that I can go to paradox.com and I can find all of my sessions that I've ever created and I can get all student responses there. I can see it with the student names attached if they're signed in. Today, you all didn't sign in, so I'm not going to be able to show you that option. I didn't ask you to submit your email at the beginning when you logged in, but I can go back and I can see everything here, all my sessions, and I would just click on this icon right here and be able to pull it back up even after class had ended and, and um, review all student responses. So let me show you how this works, and I'm going to just ramp you through a sample activity, and this is more of an elementary activity, um, but I have some volunteers, so if, so Please just focus on my screen right now. Um, this is one that I will ask you guys, you do not, do not participate in this part. I'm just gonna have um, the people who have already selected from the Pear Deck team and the Wacom team are gonna go through this with me so that I can show you how I control things from the teacher end um, while things are going on. So I would ask a question and kind of, I want to really focus here on just like, how are you thinking about doing 18 times five. And I can show the responses. So I can see as students are writing, I can see in real time how they're going about this problem. So I can see who's slow to start. I can see who's getting started right away. I have all of that information available to me. Now, here you'll see that there are no names attached because this is called the projector view in Pear Deck. And so I always show this during class. I never show any other view. There is another view that I can go into, which is what I was just telling you about, where I can open this teacher dashboard in a new window. And that would have all student names attached. Right now, I had everybody log in anonymously, so it's not gonna be actual names, but this is where I can see who's getting stuck and who needs my attention. So remember when I said it's very helpful to have that second display? So this is something that I might pull up on just my, um, my Wacom tablet as my second display and not doing a screen share of so that I can see who's slow to get started. And I might be able to help them individually or just have that information for myself. Now, at this point, I'm going to lock screens and ask students to bring the attention back to the board and instead of seeing everybody working i'm going to go one by one because how i start class normally is i have them do a little bit of the problem and then i say all right so let's discuss this let's bring it back and and then i ask everybody to bring their attention back to the board and let's talk about this answer so instead of me just showing my answer for everybody to learn about in the classroom. This is an opportunity for me to show all the responses of the class and for us to talk about their responses. We can talk about the correct ones. We can talk about the incorrect ones. We can talk about what the student was thinking. And I can have students unmute their microphone at this point and talk. And you know, somebody who didn't respond with this might be able to talk about what their classmates were thinking or dive into that. Um, and it's a great way to just talk about the thinking. Now, this is an activity that, you know, if it was something like drawing this out, students can do that just with their mouse. But what is powerful is that I can then 
take it to the next screen and I might say to students, please don't respond to this one because I just want to talk about this. And what I can do is I can now log in as a student also. So as you can see on the teacher view right now, I don't have any drawing tools. So many people think, oh, I'm in Pear Deck. I can't actually draw. But what you can do is you can actually join as a student also. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab the code again. Give students a link. I'm gonna open that in this tab. And now I'm logged in like any other student is logged in, but the power of me being logged in as a student is that now I have the pen tools available to me and I can talk about the answers. And this is where me having the ability to write with my tablet, even if students were drawing things, I can draw the nitty gritty of it. So say that I was explaining, you know, I said, all right, well, we saw all these different responses and we had a chance to talk about them, but maybe nobody had thought about it the way that I was thinking about this problem. So personally, I think about this problem as, oops, I locked the responses. Um, I think about this problem as 18 is a nine times a two times a five so that I can make something multiplied by 10. But if I just say it out loud, it's very hard to follow along with what I'm saying. But if I write it as I'm talking, it can make all of the difference where I say, all right, well, I think about the 18, you know, as well, it is a nine and a two. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I then have something where I'm multiplying by a 10, which is very easy for me to now do in my head. And so at this point, I can say, well, now I have a problem that's nine times 10 and it is 90. And I just think my point here is not the math. You all already know the math as math and science teachers, but my point is the power of writing while you're talking. And I just think that there's tremendous difference in me having written this all ahead of time and then saying to students, okay, well, 18 times five is now nine times two times five. And even breaking it down that way, it, as I'm writing and talking at the same time, I find that students respond to things differently. And I just think that is the power of you at least having the device at home, um, even if students are kind of, students are interacting with you with just their mouse and kind of giving you an idea of what this might look like. So I realized that um, we're getting, you know, close to the Q&A. So this is, would be another example of something that students might be able to do at home with their mouse, just kind of representing a visual representation. And then you as the teacher can do kind of more of the nitty gritty, any algebra that you need to do, any handwriting, but maybe um, give some of the questions that are more graphical in nature that students can draw with a mouse at home right now, or more visual that they can draw with a mouse at home, allow them to do some of that. Um, and then as a teacher, you can write on these slides also to kind of further explain how things are going. And I'm gonna just show you very quickly how this goes in my, in my um, class. So sorry, I talked about this rather quickly because I realized we're getting close to the end. Um, so this is what I had said is that you can log into the Pear Deck as a student yourself. And so that is a very key thing to know and understand. That will give you the ability to ink as students are inking in the same presentation so that you can see student responses, but then you can also handwrite there so that students can see what you're saying. Um, again, the power of just having this extended display so that you can have two different views and you can have more information on your second display where you're writing so that what is ever on the projector or in this case the screen share you don't ever want to be showing you know student names to the whole class that would allow you to have that information on your second display while you're still just projecting all the anonymous things on your main view um, so the optimal scenario, of course, would be if students all have these devices at home, but obviously that is not 
a realistic thing for people to have right now um, to get it in the hands of students. So what I'm having students do is just write on their piece of paper and then they are showing, you know, maybe some work like this, they're showing it on the screen, but at the very least, maybe I have multiple choice and have everybody circle their response there because then um, I can still kind of see what students are thinking. This is everybody's answers stacked on top of one another. So if I go back, really should have shown you that before because this is very helpful for math, especially graphing type problems. I can show all of the responses together here, overlaid layout. That's not gonna make sense for this problem, but I can see all the answers stacked right, right on top of each other. And that will be super helpful for any type of graphing problems that you want to do um, so that you can see if we have class consensus or not, and we can talk about that. So let me just show you a quick little snippet of uh, my class from the other day, and this is kind of how it went. So how am I gonna do G prima for? It's just zero. Uh, I get that. Um, because when the graph of F is at four, it's a zero. All right. So you're saying here, what does G prime of X mean? It's just F of X. Yeah, uh, G prime is just F. So even though my students weren't able to write here, I was asking them to tell me what I should do next and then I was able to write for them. So we really could dive into like, why are you thinking this way? And I could still bring that visual attention to, you know, like whatever they're saying. It's hard to understand what kids are saying when they're just talking out loud. I was able to do the drawing as they were able to tell me what I should be doing next or what they would do next in the problem. And then different students just unmuted their mic and talked and I was able to draw as they were talking. So it was still students answering the questions. I was just doing the drawing for them on my screen. So that's kind of what I've been doing a lot of right now. Um, and then I, I think that we'll just, this last part, I think we'll get into the Q&A right now, um, just so I make sure that we have enough time for that. Are you ready for questions? Does that sound good? Yeah, Stacey, are you ready for questions? Melissa, do you have the questions? I do, can you hear me? Stacy, can you hear me? Is Melissa still there? No. Hey, Stacy, can you hear me? Okay, I'll, I'll go through some of these questions. Um, and uh, if anybody else from the Wacom team has been, um, Getting in these questions, just let me know. Um, let's see. Do students need OneNote to allow you as a teacher to mark up their work? Um, so they can just, what I personally do is like I have them submit as a PDF and then I pull it into OneNote or to uh, notability. So you can just pull any PDF into that platform. So no, they do not need it. If students have it, there is something called a OneNote class notebook that you might look into, but the easiest is really just have students turn it in as a PDF and then you pull it in yourself. Um, as an image, it's hard to align the image with the text. Okay, so I I agree with that. It is hard. I gave one solution there. Um, I think I answered that. I have Cami need help with the workflow regarding file handling back to students. So with Cami, I a lot of times honestly um, just to hand it back through the Google Drive option. So you know, like it does depend on if you have it um, paid 
or not paid. I think there's some more options if you have the paid, but you can always just download it and then email it back to students or you can take it back to the Google Drive. So if they shared it with you through Google Drive, it should automatically then annotate on their Google Drive. I know that sometimes teachers have some problems with that. And so one of the things that I say, if you do have any problems with that, or if your student has trouble opening it, is that you do an advanced export and then you flatten the annotations. Flattening the annotations will make sure that students will be able to print that off if they want to. Some of my students still like to print things and have it all in their binder. So I just make sure I flatten it and then I export it and I would either add it to a shared Google Drive folder with the student or I email it back to them. Um, again, you can do that it just right within your Google Drive and you can export it to a folder that you might have shared with students. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know about Equasio other than with Google. I mainly use Google. Yeah, I think that really, no matter what um, Wacom device you have at home, everything that I've shown is doable on any Wacom um, tablet. So whether it's the opaque style or the display tablet, the only thing, obviously, if it's an opaque tablet, you can't have the two screens. Um, okay, are there any other things from the... Stacy, can you hear me now? <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, I don't know why I can't hear. Melissa, I still can't hear you. Um, yes, I have my speakers all the way up. I don't know what's happening. I was hearing you before. All right, uh, I see two more questions. And we're gonna send everybody the link to the webinar and I'll also make sure that I have all of the um, things that I've talked about today. Um, I'll have some links there to like where you get Equasio, where you get the teacher upgrade, um, how you get started with Pear Deck. Um, I want to make sure that I share with you a couple more things. So um, with Pear Deck, they, it is free right now for educators. So go ahead and go to paradec.com. It should show up on your screen right now, slash stay dash connected, and you will be able to um, request free access. There's always a free version, but the drawing tools and some of the other things that I've shown you today, you do need a premium um, subscription for that. And also Wacom is offering some special discounts for all of you um, that are available until May 6th. So I'll leave that information on the screen. And if you visit their e-store, then you can get the discounts also. Let me see if there's anything else. Okay, uh, yes, please, Melissa, take over. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Okay, everybody, thank you so much to Stacy. Um, we will send out an email after this webinar, including the YouTube link um, and links to Stacy's um, Twitter accounts and her website, as well as her book. Thank you so much for joining um, and we will send you an email. Have a good day.